Thank you for joining us at The Church Online. If you live in the Visalia area and you would like to join us at one of our weekend gatherings, The Church meets at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., 120 South Locust Street, downtown Visalia. Before we get started with today's message, here's something we want to let you know about. This fall, The Church is launching its second campus in Tulare, California. For more information, visit welcometothechurch.com slash the church at Tulare. Now let's get started with today's message. Today, there are three things that no matter who you are, no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter uh, your gender, no matter your religious background, no matter your height, how much money or lack of money thereof you have in your bank account, there are three things that are the same for every single person, and they will be the same for every single person until we are no longer on this earth. We cannot change this. Now, this is super simple, but it's something I think we don't think about a whole lot. And here, here's what it is. This is, what, this is what none of us can get away from. Number one, where we've been. That's our past. We all have some place that we have been. We all have a past of some sort. Everybody does. Secondly is where we are right now. That's our present. We all have a present. We all have a now. So we all have, this is where I've been. This is where I am. And here's the third thing. This is where I'm going, the future. We all have a past. We all have a present. We all have a future. We will have a past. We will have a present. We will have a future until we are no longer in this world, okay? This is how it's always going to be. Now, now here's the craziest thing about the past, the present, and the future. Many times, unfortunately, many times we put the premium, we put the weight, we, we put the strength, kind of the engine in, in these three, we put the strength in the past. This is, this is where I've been. Because of this is where I've been, this is where I am today. Because of what happened to me a year ago, this is what I'm doing today. Because of what happened to me whenever I was a child, this is where I am today, and this is how I will be in the future. And unfortunately, too many times, we put too much stock in, we put too much weight and strength in our past. Where it needs to be is it needs to be in our future. The strength, the, the, the power, the, the weight, the true change agent is not from what happened to us in the past. It is not what's happening to us now. It is what's going to happen tomorrow when we're moving forward. That's where we need to put it. And here's the interesting thing about it. There's this, there's this journey of no matter where I've been, this is where I am, and this is where I'm going. And there's so much power in the future that wherever I'm going in the future will very quickly become where I've been. Right? So like for me this morning, stick with me, it's kind of somewhat confusing, but for me... In the past, I was at the 10 a.m. Where have I been? At the 10 a.m. in Tulare. Where am I now? The 11 a.m. in Visalia. Where am I going? The 1 o'clock Next Steps class right after this, okay? But as soon as I get to the 1 o'clock Next Steps class, the 11 o'clock becomes where I've been. The 1 o'clock Next Steps class is where I am. And then hopefully Taco Bell is where I'm going, right? <laughs> And then once I get to Taco Bell, the one o'clock is where I've been. Taco Bell is where I'm at. And then a big fat nap is where I'm going. Okay? <laughs> and it never stops. So the power is not in where I've been. The power really is a little bit in where I am. But most of it is in where I'm going. Because where I'm going is going to set the stage for the rest of my past, for all of my presence. And it is so important for us to get this figured out. So because of that, we're doing a teaching series simply called Forward. Going from where we are to where he wants us to be. And that's the rub. That's the rub. In our life, we have a choice. You don't have much of a choice of where you've been. That's already been decided. You really don't have too much of a choice of where you are. That's kind of been determined right now. But you have a crazy choice of where you're going. And where you're going is, are we going to go to where I want to go, to where they want me to go, or am I going to go where God wants me to be? And that's the series we're in. 
We're in a series, and we're talking out, teaching out of the book of Philippians. And today we're in Philippians chapter 3. And Paul is writing to, for the most part, um, Greek, or, um, Greek Christians, Gentile Christians, who have come to faith in Jesus through the gospel. They were not raised in a Jewish tradition, for the most part. And he's talking to people a lot like us, people who, I don't know everybody's background, but most of us, we were not raised in Jewish tradition. We weren't, weren't raised by Old Testament law and traditions. We were raised in Gentile traditions, and we've come to Christ through the gospel. And Paul's writing to people a lot like us in the church of Philippi. And this is what he writes in Philippians 3. He says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. We'll stop right there just real quick. It's interesting. He says, I want to what? I want to be rich. Nope. I want to be famous. Nope. I want to drive a really cool car with some crazy rims. No. I want to have, no. I want to what? Know Christ. That's what I want. Paul is setting the stage that my future is Christ. What I really want is Christ. And it says, I want to know Christ. And it goes, yes, in the power of his resurrection. That's kind of really cool and positive. But then it takes a crazy turn for me. I also want to participate in his sufferings and become like him in his death. It's like, whoa, this guy, he's going deep here. What Paul wants is, Paul wants Christ. All of it. I want the good parts, man. I want the parts that feel good. I want the stuff that's bad, that, that feels bad. I just want to know Jesus. I don't want to live on this plane of wanting material possessions. I want to go to a whole new level in my life and know Christ. In his resurrection, in his sufferings, and knowing him after I die, I want Jesus. That's where I'm going. That's what he's saying to, to the Philippian people. He goes on and he says, not that I have already attained all of this. Listen, I'm not there yet. Or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. And that's referring back to chapters 1 and 2 where he's talking about the gospel. I press on. I want to know Jesus, and I haven't got there quite yet, but I am pressing on so, and, so that I can begin to take hold of the gospel and understand Jesus even more. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken a hold of it, but this one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now all of us then who are mature should take a, such a view of things. And if at some point you think differently, that too God will make it clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. The passage we want to really sit on today is this one. It's, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But this one thing I do, straining forward, straining towards the call in which Christ Jesus has called me heavenward. In this passage of scripture, what Paul is saying, we're going to sit on this and then we'll kind of teach it through. It was what Paul is saying here is, listen. This is, this is my past. And yes, if you know Paul's past, there's some part that's really good. There's some part that's really bad. I mean, he has an amazing past. He's got a shady past. He's borderline like a really uh, smart, theological, philosophical terrorist. That was basically what Paul was in the past. And Paul says, I am forgetting my past, the good parts and the bad past. I'm forgetting my past, and I am straining towards, I am moving towards what Jesus has for me in the future. I don't care about my past, but Jesus has got my future. I don't care about my past, but Jesus has got my future. And when it comes to our life, the challenge for us is, you can't do anything about your past. It is gone. It's, it's, it's in the past. You can't do anything about it. You really can't do a whole lot about here. The question, the, the rub, the, the tension now is what about 30 seconds from now? What about an hour from now? What about a week from now? What am I working towards? 
Am I working towards what I want? Am I working towards what they want? Or am I like Paul? I want what Jesus wants for me. That's the tension of all of our lives. This is where I've been. Can't do much about that. This is where I am now. Can't do much about that. But going forward, do I want what Jesus wants for me? And that's what we want to talk about today. Because all of us in moving forward, that, that sounds good. I mean, if I was to say, raise your hand, hey, who wants what Jesus wants? For you? Everybody's like, yeah, okay, cool, that's awesome. Then, then, then the hard part, though, is in order to do that, we, we have to actually trust God. To, to go where Jesus wants you to go, you've got to trust that Jesus has the best place in mind. To say what Jesus wants you to say, you got to trust that Jesus knows what's best to say. To do what Jesus wants you to do, you got to trust that Jesus has the ultimate best thing out of all the different choices. It's Jesus' choice that's ding, 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 winner, winner. This is the good one. you got to trust Jesus. And that's, that's the rub. That's the tension. Because in our life, there are so many different things that we can actually trust. The first one is, in making decisions of moving forward, we, we could trust, we could trust our, ourselves. Based on, based on all of the past that I've had, based on all of my experiences of good, based on all of my experiences of bad, and where I am today, looking through the filter of where I've been in my life experience, this is what I think the best course should be. Based on what's happened to me, this is the text that I think I should send. Based on what's happened to me, this is the direction I think I should go. Based on what's happened, we could, we could trust ourselves to make those decisions of where we're going. The second one is, is we, could trust, we could trust our friends. We could trust our family. What's, okay, based on how my family thinks and how my family is, this is what I should do in the future. My friends, if I, if I do this, what's my friend going to think? What's Johnny going to think? What's Debbie going to think? What are, what's their opinion? We can trust our friends in moving forward. And then the other one is, is we can trust, we can trust culture. We could, it's what I call like uh, um, macro culture, which is big culture, which would be education, uh, sexuality, entertainment choices, political, you know, trends. And we can, moving forward, we can kind of, okay. yep, the wind's blowing this way, so I'll go that way. We can do that. Or maybe it's microculture, which would be in my home or in my school or in my job. What's, what's culturally accepted where I am, and I'll make my decisions based on the winds and the waves of culture. And then the fourth one, the fourth option, which I don't know, I'm a, I'm a Christian and a pastor, so I, th I think I'm a little biased, I'll be honest, but it's, it's God. The fourth, the fourth option is in moving forward, we can... We can do what God says. We could do what God wants. We could do what God chooses for us, whether it's the power of his resurrection or whether it's suffering. We'll be fine with it because it's God. Man, that's tough. So out of all of those choices, why should I, why should you, why should we, why should we trust God? with the next thing we're going to do? Why should we trust God with our next move, no matter what it is, big or small? Why should you trust God? Well, today what I want to do is, is I'm going to sit on a little, little section here, and I've talked about some of this before, and here's the thing, I'm going to talk about it again at some point because there, there's certain foundational things I feel like as believers that we've got to wrestle with, and I want us as a church to get it into our individual DNA. So we just run with it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it again. Why should we trust God in moving forward? No matter where you are now, why should you trust God in moving forward? Here's, here's the first reason. Number one is you should trust God moving forward, and you could, should let God be the one who moves you to where he wants to go because he is God and you are not. That, that's the first one, okay? We should trust God more than ourselves, because he is God and we are not. We aren't God. I know that's bad English, but we aren't God. We ain't him, okay? I'm going to go Indiana. We ain't him. We're not God, all right? Now, here's the thing. In our world today, 
we prop ourselves up almost like we are. I mean, we've got our own TV channel, for crying out loud. It's called our Facebook wall, and we can post our thoughts and our principles and our ideas and our news, and we have our own channel, for crying out loud. We've got our own media pages. We've got our own ideas that are very important. And in our world today, it, we're, we're kind of programmed to think it's my world and my kingdom, so I call the shots for me. Hey, 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 hey. You call shots for you, brother. But, that's, but don't, don't come over here and call shots for me, because this is my world. It's almost like we're, we're kind of God. But here's the truth of the matter. <laughs> when it comes to God, what it takes qualities and characteristics to be God, creator of the earth, it's, a, <laughs> it's above our pay grade, okay? We, we don't have any of those characteristics. We don't have any of those traits. We don't have any of those qualities unless he puts them inside of us. We're not him. And we struggle with this because it's like, no, I'm really smart. I'm really good. I know what's right. And I have an opinion, and you should listen to it. There was a guy in the, in the Bible by the name of Job, and some people pronounce it Job. It's not Job. It's Job. And Job was going through probably, there's an old movie, I think it's called A No Good, Horrible, Very Bad Day. He had like that on steroids times 10. It was a colossal, horrible day. He loses his kids, he loses his farm, he loses his money, he loses everything except for his wife, he loses it all. And Job, rightfully so, is distraught, he's hurt, he's confused, he's angry, and so Job for lack of a better word, you'd have to read the whole book, but for lack of a better word, he kind of starts to run his mouth to God. Kind of trying to explain to God what's up and questioning God and his authority and why are you doing this to me and who are you to do this to me? What did I ever do to you? And having kind of a pity party. And again, I would say, and from my viewpoint, it makes a lot of sense. But from God's viewpoint, it was a little different. And in Job chapter 38, God hears Job, and here's what he's saying, and here's his mindset, and he comes to Job in Job 38, and it says he comes to him in a cloud, and it says that the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Basically, he's saying, who is this that's running his mouth and don't know a thing that he's saying? That's what he's saying. Who here is going blah, 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 blah. I'm so smart and doesn't know anything. Who's that guy? And Job's like, uh, well, it's me, right? And so God then says, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? And he goes, brace yourself like a man and I will question you and you shall answer me. What God is saying there, when he's saying, brace yourself like a man. I remember playing basketball, and they would always say, when you're going to set a pick, if you play basketball, you remember this. If you're going to set a pick, you set a pick like this. So that whenever the person comes and bumps into you, your chest is protected and other things are protected as well. You're, you're bracing yourself like a man. That's what God's saying right there. Job, get ready. Because daddy's coming hard. Get, get ready, buddy. I, I'm, I'm not going to be soft with you here. That's what he's saying. So, let's go on. He says, where, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation, Job? Tell me if you were there. Hey, Job, who, who marked off the, its dimension? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across the universe? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Job, who, who shut up the sea behind the doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made its clouds and its garments and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed the limits for the ocean and set its doors and bars in place? Where were you when I said, this far you may come and no farther? Here is where your proud waves will halt. Job, have you ever been given orders to the morning sun? Or shown the dawn its place, that it might take the earth by its edges and shake the wickedness out of it? Have you ever journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you, Job? Have you ever seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Job, do you comprehend the vast expanses of all of the earth? Tell me 
if you do. Then God goes on for a chapter and a half throwing out what he knows and asking Job if he knows the same thing. He's throwing out, Job, this is what I did. Hey, Job, you ever done that? Hey, Job, look at what I can do. Hey, Job, can you do this? And at the end of it, he looks at Job and he says, he says, Job, if you can do any of these things, I myself as God will admit that you can take care of yourself. And Job's response is, I, I can say nothing. In fact, he says, God, I, I spoke to you once, but now I cover my mouth. I will not speak again. Basically, he's saying, listen, I don't know what you know. God, I can't do what you do. I'm not as strong as you. You're God, I'm not. That's what he says. And, and you see, it's so interesting with us because, again, again, I, I understand where Job's coming from because I've been there before myself, but it's like, we have this, this concept of ourselves that we are really, really sharp and we know the best thing to do. But when the truth of the matter comes in, we don't, we say, yes, I know what my future holds and I know what the best decision is to do tomorrow and I think this is the direction that I should go with my entire life. Yes, this is it. And we think that we know these grand schemes, but then we get to the line and in and out and we can't decide if it's number one, number two, or number three. But yet we know all the things that we could do and we can't decide if we want to get the crunchy fries or the regular ones. We just can't make up our mind. And then we choose, and we wish we would have won the, got the other one. The truth is, we're not God. So why should moving... Listen, I don't know where you are right now in here, and I don't know where you are in your life, but moving forward regardless of the past, moving forward here and on the outside, you should, you should trust God because He's God and you're not. The book of James says... That we, 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 make, we make plans and say, I'll go to this city and I'll work for a year and I'll make this much money. And then James comes back and says, but you don't even know what tomorrow brings. What you should say is, if the Lord wills me to go to the city, I will. If the Lord wants me to make a profit, I will. But we boast in our arrogance. So first and foremost, and I know it's like, like kicking us all down, but no, it's like understanding we're not God. And there's a peace that comes with that. There's a joy that comes with that if we embrace it. So number one, we should trust him because we're not God. We are, we, he is God and we're not. And the second one is, is we, we should trust God because our plans and our schemes and our agendas and our goals, when we do it our way, it, it generally doesn't work. Have you ever noticed that before? Let's just be, okay, be honest. Well, in the last two years, who has made around the end of the year to springtime, you have set, you can call them goals, New Year's resolutions, ideas, I'm going to start a diet, I'm going to save this much money, I'm going to read a book a month, I'm going to, and you got this grand idea, raise your hand if you have set an agenda that you are going to walk out, raise your hand, if that was you, raise your hand, okay, now you know where I'm going with this, that's why nobody's raising their hand, right? No, it wasn't me, man. I'm smarter than that. No, we all do this in some way. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to make this much money. By here, it's going to expand to this. Or I'm going to do this and say this and text them, and this will work out. And more times often than not, it doesn't work, or many times it even gets worse. What I have seen in my own life and also in the Bible is that when I do it my way and don't consider God at all, it fails miserably pretty much every time. I, in, in Scripture, we can start off talking about, the, about Satan. The devil, who's one of God's angels, wants, doesn't want to do it God's way. God's way is, is for the devil to be an archangel that leads the worship services in heaven. And the devil starts thinking, ah, that's cool, but moving forward, I don't want to be the number two guy. I want to be the number one guy. Hey, God! I'll take your chair, and he tries to get a whole bunch of angels to attack God so that the devil can overthrow God, and the devil can actually be God, and the devil does it his way, saying, God, I'm going to overthrow you, and God says, nope, and he kicks him right out of heaven. And it, it goes south, literally, for the devil quick. 
The devil did it his way and it didn't work. Adam and Eve, they know. God says, do it this way. You can eat what you want, but don't eat of this. They know God's way. They say, nah, I'm moving. I know, what, I know you told me that in the past, but moving forward, I trust the snake and I trust my own intuition about this fruit more than I trust what you say. So, And now all of a sudden we got the common cold, we've got leukemia, we have cancer, we have death, we have tsunamis, the earth is broken. Why? Because Adam and Eve did it their way and it went south quick. Abraham, God comes to Abraham and says, I'm going to give you a child. You're married. This child's going to come through your spouse. They do what married couples do to make babies. The baby never comes. Baby never comes. Baby never comes. Finally, Abraham says, I'm not going to do it God's way. I'm going to make a baby not with my, with my bride, not with my covenant relationship. I'm going to go outside of that relationship, and I'm going to make a baby with my slave girl. And they have a baby. Well, then God's word comes to pass, and another baby's born, and then the families begin to fight. There's an unbelievable split inside of the family that goes all the way through the annals of time. And today in the Middle East, we are seeing the fight between Abraham and his sons that they, because Abraham did it his way. Abraham did it his way. It didn't work. The devil did it his way. It didn't work. Adam and Eve did it their way. It didn't work. Judas. Judas is walking with Jesus and has a choice. He's at the Last Supper. From this time on, I'm going to continue to walk with this man named Jesus. I don't know if I like that path. Plus, I need some money. I'm going to turn Jesus in, and I'm going to get 30 coins for it. That's the better way to go. And he decides moving forward to do it his way. He sells Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, and within a few hours, he's hanging from a tree because he commits suicide. It doesn't go well. well. It never does. And in our life, how many times have we, okay, because of this is what's happened to me in the past, and this is where I am today, I'm going to send this text. And it doesn't get better. The text actually makes it worse. Because this is what happened to me in the past, and this is where I am today. I'm going to respond this way, and it doesn't get better. It gets way worse. That happens all the time. Because when we do it our way, it, it goes south quick. And, and, and here's, here's the thing. So that's why we should trust God. Because he's God, we're not. We should trust God because our way just doesn't seem to work. So what, what should we do then? For, for you in the chair watching online, what, what, what sh- moving forward with everything that's happened to you in the past and with where you are right now, if you want to trust God, what, what does God want you to do? What, what does God want you to do from move now on? What does he want you to do tomorrow? What does he want you to do this month? Here's the craziest thing. I really sat on this and prayed about it. And when it comes to what does God want me to do moving forward, this is the craziest thing. But I think you already know. I I think there's a really good chance you already know what God wants you to do because he's been whispering it to you for the past six months, for the past month, for the past year. You keep getting this nudge that you don't necessarily feel like doing, and it's definitely not going to be culturally correct, and it's definitely not something that your family is going to say, yay, you're so smart. But it keeps coming back, and it keeps coming back. You you already know what he wants. Maybe not the grand scheme of your life, but there's this one thing that you know it's him. And for for some in the room, maybe for you, it's, man, I, I... you keep getting this nudge to, I, I, I used to really be a person of faith, and I was really involved in, in church and attending. I was really kind of growing in my walk, and then, I don't, I don't know, just, just life happened, and some things happened at the church, or some things happened with friends and family, and it's been a season now of a year, two years. And for the past little bit, you've had this little thing inside of you when you drive by a church or when someone talks or you see a shirt, and it's like, you, you, you need to get back in church. You, you need to start walking in faith again. You, you, you already know what God wants. He, he wants you to get, get back. Walk in faith, getting plugged in again. And it might not feel good. 
but you know that's what he wants. For, for some of you, it's, it, or for us, it's, there's, there's this something here that maybe other people know about, maybe they don't, but there's something here that you know is kind of off, and there's times whenever you do this thing or act certain ways that it's almost like God just points a finger at you and says, I see that, give it to me. Stop doing that. That's wrong, and you know it's wrong, and you feel guilty every time you do it, so stop. Repent and come clean. You know what God wants you to do. For some in the room, it's like, man, you, you, you get this little voice inside of you that says, listen, because of your sin, you're separating yourself from me. But I died on the cross so that you could be my child. Just, just repent and come clean. And for some of you, it's just simply to take a step forward and repent and say, God, I, I, give, this, I give this mess to you. For others, it might be he's given you giftings and you keep getting these nudges and opportunities to step in and use a gifting or to use a desire for the good of maybe kids or for the good of youth or for the good of the community. And for whatever reason, you keep saying no, but inside of you, you know, I know that I'm supposed to help out with this. I know that I'm supposed to step in and serve. I, th I think you know what he wants you to do next. Maybe it's making a phone call and straightening out a relationship. But what happens many times is, is we don't move forward where God wants us to go because we're too busy looking where we are now. And I, well, I can't do that because this is what happened. And I, I can't really get back in church because like two years ago that happened. And I, I can't really say I repent again because six months ago I repented and I stepped back into it. So... I know that the right thing to do would be to make things right, but this happened, so it doesn't make sense. You see, the past is a horrible gauge for what you should do in the future. The best gauge is to not trust yourself, don't trust culture, don't trust friends and family. What is God saying? And then to come to a place in your life where, like Paul, you trust God enough to say, Jesus, I want Christ. I want the resurrection, and I want the suffering. I just want to obey you. And I don't know that everybody in the room is there yet. But like Paul says, he says that all of us that are mature, that should be the mindset that we have. So I, my prayer is, is that if you're not there yet, that you would get there to where you trust God enough that moving forward, I'm going to go from where I am to where God wants me to be. And the, again, I don't know why to say this again. I think, I think you already know what it is. Do you trust him enough to step in and do it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you so much, Lord, for your goodness and grace. And God, we ask today that you would take this message that is actually a very, very simple message. Moving forward in our life, are we going to trust ourselves, friends, or culture or are we going to realize we are not God and that our way, even though good intentioned, many times falls way short. And the best thing to do is to just trust God enough to do the simple thing that he's already telling us to do. And God, let us take that step today. So I pray for those in the room, Lord, that, that, that have been maybe burnt by church or burnt by relationships in the past and life changed and work habits changed and they've just been out of the flow of church they've been out of the flow of faith holy spirit give them the strength to just follow you and get get back involved yes it'll be tough and they'll change their schedule but it's it's what you want and you're trustworthy god for those in the room, Lord, that are struggling with, with sin or past sins or repetitive sins in their life, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that they would, they would simply just take you at your word and you said in your word in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, that you, God, are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Let them just come to you and repent to be your child. God, if they've if they got abilities and, and skill sets that could make this world a better place, either through the world, world's things that are going on or in and through the body of Christ, through kids' ministry or missions or serving or teaching. Lord, let them listen to that voice and get plugged in and serve. Make the world a better place. 
God, I don't, I don't know where you're taking all of us as individuals. But I know as a body of believers, you are taking us to live a life to where it is the gospel that is the highest cause. So Holy Spirit, we just release you into our life to do as you wish. And help us to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.